All right, Shalom, Shalom. It's Brother Kashukwala, giving all glory, honor, and praises unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rechak Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well. Peace of salutation to the elect, 144 First Fruit. And uh, today I'm going to jump in uh, on a lesson pertaining to uh, how the word of the Lord is precious. All right, so without further ado, is my first uh, precept. It's for, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3 and 1. And the child Samuel, Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. Okay, because um, Hannah, his mother, uh, vowed a vow of a Nazarite and it, given Samuel to the Lord all the days of his life. So he ministered unto the Lord all the days of his life. And it says, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And that's what we see right now. The word of the Lord is precious. And the word for precious is, if I'm not mistaken, it's a, a yaquar, okay, which means valuable, okay? It has, it's weighty, all right? And just for edification purposes, I'm going to pull it up real quick. Yep, there we go. Yaquara, yaquar, all right? It says uh, valuable, prize, weighty, precious, rare, splendid, okay, costly, highly valued, rare, glorious, influential. Those are all great synonyms or, I don't know, adjectives, if I'm saying that correctly, to describe the word of the Lord. And that's not even, those words aren't even good enough at the end of the day you know nothing can really wrap your head around how good the word of the lord is but even so it's precious meaning it's very rare not a lot of people can attain these um these sayings they can't inter you know break it down correctly all right so it's precious so call all your how about shy if he did call you okay because you have your opportunity to get a piece of something so precious, so fine, okay? You got to think, 144,000 are to be saved. There's over 9 billion people on this earth today. And only a few thousand people have the word of the, uh, the, word of the Lord. That's very rare. It's precious, okay? So hold on to this thing that's extremely valuable, okay? It says, in the word of the Lord was precious in those days. It's precious in these days right now, and it's about to become even more precious or rare coming in these days uh, soon. So let me get a, a classic precept, you know, to back that point up. This is Amos chapter 8, verse 11, and it reads, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord power, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of of for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So a famine is when you have a food shortage. There's not a lot of food. The food is precious. Okay. Well, the Lord said, I'm not going to, he is going to do that type of fam famine, but in this particular verse, he's not speaking about that. He's speaking about a famine of his word. His word is going to become way, way, way more finer, way, way uh, more rare, valuable, you know, um, it pretty much the word is going to be ducked off, as Jake liked to say it, okay? And only a few select men are going to have the understanding of his words and be instilled, in, and the words are going to be instilled inside those men, okay? Very few, all right? And so, again, it says, Behold, the days come, save the Lord power, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord, and they, and they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the, uh, and from the north even to the east, and they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it, because it's going to be so rare. And going back to Samuel, that that verse twelve clears up what it says here. There was no open vision. All right, Amos eight and twelve. They're trying to find it. They're seeking. They're trying to seek the word. There will be no more open vision. The vision is open right now 
uh, uh, you know, starting from Apostle Tahar on down. You know, the, we could see it. Apostle Gabar always talks about us being seers. When even when you read in the book of uh, uh, Samuel, it talks about a seer, but with visionaries. Okay, there was no open vision to the, his precious word in those days, and especially now in these days, only a select few are going to get it. Okay, only a select few. All right, so I'm gonna get one more precept and I'm gonna close it out. Isaiah, let's see, Isaiah 13 and 12. It says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than, uh, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. That's right, but he will make a man more precious than fine gold. So, you know, niggas who want to scoff and, and act like this thing is a game want to finally come back because they see shit popping off that that man who they scoffed against said, okay, that man who he's trying to seek for will be more precious than fine gold. It's hard to find some gold, okay? It's hard to find gold. That's why the gold, like, purchasing gold is so expensive. It's very rare. It's precious, okay? All right, I'll make a man more precious than fine gold. And what's more precious than fine gold? Like a ruby, okay? All right, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. That's right. So all these niggas who were claimed up and down that the men of the Lord are speaking some false shit or the men of the Lord who are out in the highways and byways doing their thing ain't the real men of the, you know, ain't the prophets. And the day when those men who were speaking what y'all were scoffing on, that he, that, and you try to seek for him, but can't find him, like it says in Amos 8 and 12, they're going to be way more precious than fine gold, man. And this word is going to be very stretched thin, okay? Okay? Something is so thin that you can't even see it, okay? Very precious, all right? So, you know, I just want to come with a quick lesson on how the word of the Lord is extremely precious. And call all you how about me, I was shy, that we got it now. Well, instead, we don't have to be that uh, uh, that stat that's in uh, Psalm I think 110 and 3. It goes, um, in the day of the, uh, the Lord, that in the day of the, the power of the people shall be willing. We, we were willing before the Lord had to come down. You know what I'm saying? Before the, the Edomites had to come down. We were willing before all this happened. But people are going to be willing when it's happen, happening. And they're going to get a swift kick in the chest. Or they're just not going to be able to find the precious word of the Lord. Because it's, it's going to be done. You know, it's going to be a famine out. You know? So I hope y'all brothers were edified. And again, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Mechakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone who were well. Peace, love, salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. It's Brother Kasha Kuala. Until the next time, we'll say Shalom.